So we're preparing for the NCAA final championships. It will be in Eugene, Oregon next week. And we have our three gentlemen with us that have qualified in their event, which is exciting. That's the most amount of men we've ever qualified for the final championship. So we're really looking forward to going out there and producing some more All-Americans. What does it mean for the program to have, like you said, the most that you've ever had? What does that mean for the program and recruiting and everything involved? This is huge for us to have these these men qualify. And it's not that they just squeaked in qualifying in the very last qualifying position. They're all, as you know, top ranked in their particular event. So that's fantastic for us because that's getting the University of Buffalo name out there. Our recruits are seeing that. And honestly, the other schools around the country, the powerhouse schools are looking at us knowing that we're a threat to them. And that's exciting. So it's your second straight year making it qualifying. Um, what are you going to have to do different this year um, to succeed and hopefully win a title? Well, I don't think I'd have to do anything different. I just have to go out there and do exactly what I've been doing and stick to my guns, you know. We've trained this hard all the way up to it, and just like Garnum says, it's not where you start, it's where you finish. So I'm just going to go out there and give it what I got. Um, how has Coach Garnum helped you throughout this season? I mean, you set school records and MAC records, and how has, he, how has he helped you perform? Well, he keeps me striving to be the best that I could be and keeps me pushing and make sure that I'm, you know, on my way to where I need to be and just fills me with motivation. You know, he's a great coach. Um, what's your ultimate goal heading in? Obviously, it's to win a, a title, but what are what are your expectations and goals for this weekend or next week? Um, I would love to win it. That's the ultimate goal. And, uh, you know, just throw as far as I can. You know, we're tapering for this meet, so I should be fresh. My muscles, muscles should be firing. Um, Hopefully, I throw far. Okay, Mike, um, talk about the decathlon a little bit. How difficult of an event it is, is it? Um, it's definitely one of the hardest events because it's made up of 10 different events. Um, you have to be re very explosive, but also ha have a lot of tactical skills. Pretty much every event, all the throws, high jump, long jump, uh, pole vault, it's a big one too. and. Just, it definitely takes a lot on your body. You got to be like, body's be feeling good and like physically prepared and mentally prepared too. Uh, people say that you're the best athlete in the MAC because you win the decathlon. Uh, how do you pace yourself throughout the ten events? Like, how do you do it? Is it all mental or is there? How how do you pace yourself? Um, it's very difficult because in the first event, if you don't run what you wanted to run. You gotta leave that behind you and get to the next one and do what you can. I, in the conference meet, I ran a lot slower than I wanted to. In the first event, I came out, had two bad jumps in my in long jump, and then PR'd on my last one. And you just gotta use that momentum from that, bring it to the, the meet after that, and just try and use the energy. And Ryan, you saved your best jump of the year for qualifying. <laughs> the right time. Yeah, right. the right time. Um, how have you improved throughout the season? Like, you've been improving every single meet. How, how have you done that? Um, well, in the beginning of the season, I, I started out long jumping. I haven't jumped since high school, so my form was terrible. I was just basically running and jumping to, like, any other, like, amateur long jumper would. But then um, as I progressed, Coach would pick out, like, the little things that I would do wrong. And like Mike said, he would explain in a way where I would understand how to, like, um, fix my problems, I guess. And so each meet, I would progressively get better at one specific event, uh, I mean, one specific part of my jump. Uh, example, like the runway, the penultimate, the in the air, or the landing, and stuff like that. So I get better like that. Um, you're one of seven underclassmen in the event in the long jump, so that's pretty good for being only a sophomore. Right. Um, what do you have to do to win? Jump pretty far. <laughs> um, well, my ultimate goal right now is obviously to win NCAAs, but also to qualify for the uh, USATF um, meet, which I have to jump 795 in meters, which is 26 feet 1 inch. So I would love to do that too and keep my season going. But um, to win it, it, it all depends on how everyone's feeling. It's the conditions that everyone's dealing with during that time. So I'd say probably like a 790s or even maybe an 8-meter jump would win it. 
So your throwers have always been strong. John's qualified the last two years. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to have two other guys in this in different events? It means our program's getting better and better and better, and we're getting stronger and stronger. Uh, we, you know, we continue to build all the areas of our program, and I think this year was a great example of showing that for both our men's and our women's team that, that we have depth across the board, uh, where we were able to score points, where we were able to advance student athletes to the preliminary round, and now advancing student athletes to the final championship in three different events is really great for us.